Hey there, just updating everyone on my hatch of my Brinsay incubator. Today is, what is today? I think it's the third or fourth day. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I first had this machine running for two days before I set the eggs. And um, I had an, a different thermometer in there and I wasn't going off this one and it was uh, not quite up to temperature and I set the eggs so the only problem I had so far is that I had to increase there's a little um, let me show that feeding as I'm you know going through this you know just kind of showing you one thing I meant to show on that when I was showing the features too is the vent here which opens and closes like that I'm going to leave it halfway but in here is where you have your temperature selection knob. Let me go to macro focus. Okay, you see that? So it turns in the instruction, it's right here. It turns clockwise to increase or counterclockwise to decrease. So I did have to increase a couple of times because uh, 24 hours after I set, I was still only at 98, a little over 98. Now I'm at a little bit over 99. And, um, you know, I, I'm trying not to set too much, and I'm trying to leave a, a good maybe six hours or so in between setting and in between adjustments. I think that a little bit over 99 is probably close enough. But let's see. Yep, we're at a little bit over 99. If you can see that. Okay, let me switch back to regular focus. Okay, so um, there we go. So far, so good. I have not done any candling yet. I'm going to do that Friday. Um, you can see all the eggs in there. I may as well tell you what I'm hatching. Uh, we have 12 black ostrilor, which are in the first two rows. Um, I'm what, they're all brown egg layers in here. Egg layers. <laughs> thought I said something else for a second. So that's all I have. Okay, and over here you can see I have four buff Orpington. I have two barred rock. And it looks like that other row is all Heritage Delaware, um, which I have some great chickens. I think I have another video of my chickens uh, mating if you want to look at that. And they're just, they're just great chickens. Um, I didn't hatch the female Delawares, but I hatched the rooster. And he's just a great looking rooster, and he's not related to the females, so I should get some really good chips. Anyways, um, continuing on, you can see that I have pulled out my little giant incubators. Um, this one is a circulated air unit, and this one is a still air unit. And I have egg turners in both, and they are getting set up, and I'm just trying to regulate temperatures before I compare hatch rates between the Brinsay, the fan unit, and the still air unit. Um, this needs to get to 99.5, which we are slightly over, and this one needs to get to around 102. It looks like we're spot on, but I need to let it sit longer. Um, last year, I did not do well with these two incubators, and they were only used for one hatch. Now, I'm hoping to have better results this year because last year all of my eggs were shipped eggs, and this year um, I'm using my own eggs. Uh, last year my roosters were killed by some predators, so uh, I was not able to hatch any of my own eggs last year except for shipped eggs. So hopefully we have better luck. But um, I did have problems. I want to tell you about the problems I had with these machines last year. Besides temperature spikes and a lot of them and dips, uh, the bottom on this machine, um, it came out of the box kind of bent, a little bit bent. And it was the last What This bottom was actually to this machine. Um, and this top was to this bottom. But I switched them. And I'll show you what happened in the top of this one. In the top of this one, one of the screws randomly came out. So I had to just kind of jerry-rig it in there. And it happened on two of them. Um, yeah, that keeps the heating coil up there. 
So I have it in its correct position. It should work the same. But just to let you know, that happened um, the first time using it. And also, uh, what I did down here to seal it up where the crack was is I used caulking and then I put duct tape over it. Um, and I switched out so that this one had a perfect top and bottom and this one had the uh, defective top and bottom. So just know that to take that into account with hatch rates because I did not get a good hatch at all out of this one and I got about a third of them hatched out of this one. Um, but they were all shipped eggs. So this year I'm really going to be comparing apples to apples because I'm having all the same eggs from all the same chickens in each three machine plus I'm building a homemade incubator which I have um, you know I'm working on I'm working on that still have more work to do okay. one little modification that I did make to both of my little giant incubators this is the temperature adjust and it is hairline sensitive so what I did is I drew um, a little dot on each side with a you know like a sharpie permanent marker so that I could see uh, what position it was in and I find that you know that helps me remember what it was in before or you know helps me actually see it turn I mean a lot of times it feels like it turned maybe it didn't turn I don't know but you can really question and second guess this when you're worried about your eggs hatching so that's a little tip uh, for me to you is just to draw two little lines. You can see I did the same thing over here on the still air machine.